Hi, this is Janaid, neurological care stroke and epilepsy specialist. In the last lecture, we moved through why create neurology pocketbook, and then second one would be why contribute. And today we're gonna go over the website itself, look at the features, what are the different informations that is available, and how to create that information in the first place. So let's go over one of the chapters right now and then go from there. So let's say if you're gonna to go to spinal cord anatomy. So for example, if you're going to this chapter, you're gonna first thing you're gonna see is that that who wrote this chapter and then you know who did some graphic work as well. And then it's gonna be very simple bulleted points that you need to know right away as far as introduction is concerned, what is the vertebral column, etc., and blood supply. Again, we also recommend further reading so that if you have to go and look at more resources, you can do so. And the chapter that was used as far as terms of bibliography is concerned, that is also added here. And this is a footer, and then we have this all. So more importantly, what I'm trying to say is that this is an extremely concise guide in which you go in there and you have barely one to two pages or maybe sometimes four or five pages, depending on the content, you can easily get the information that you need, which is the, the matter at hand, just in time learning. So if, for example, you're going to status migraines and you click on status migraines, you're going to end up basically seeing that, you know, how do you define status migraines? So it's highlighted. And then if you have to have diagnostic criteria that is published by ICHD3, it is highlighted. And if you're going to go down, you're going to have a complete look at what is the pathways for treatment for status epilepticus as far as people who have rescue therapies needed and those who are allergic to tryptans how do you deal with them and same thing for the reading and bibliography so it is a is a very very concise clinically applicable approach to creating learning so that's number one thing so when, whenever you're writing you have to write at least for us would be in a bulleted format so everyone can actually see that and precisely know exactly what to do next for the patient that's the key thing now there are multiple resources if you go to the home page itself you're going to see that the first thing you see is that all the different categories in which the chapters are written in so if you click on one category then you have all the movement disorders and this is constantly updated we have published about 50 chapters now and then we are another 50 chapters are in the process of being written so it is a multinational effort people from all over the world are contributing now from brazil india bangladesh pakistan and then therefore given that this is going to be always under creative commons license non-commercial of course and then share a life so if you are using it you can actually use that in your own publication later at any time as long as it is non-commercial now let's look at the different aspects of the website itself. So there are other neuro resources that we have created. So if you have go to neurology labs, you're gonna see all the lab work that you need to order. So if a person comes in with fatigue, myopathy, neuropathy, et cetera, you can go there and you can see that there, these are the different lab works that you're supposed to do on that patient. You don't have to do all of them, but at least you have a list in front of you. And this way you can actually go directly. This is a web link of Neuromuscular Institute at WashU. And if you need to get some advanced testing done, you can actually go to that particular website. Same thing for the myopathy. This is from Pasternak, myopathy panels, myositis panels, CSF analysis. If you're going to send a lab to Mayo Clinic, how do you do that? And those are all the links are in one place. So you go to one place and you are able to see all the different labs that you need to order for that particular pathology. Now the next one is neuro soap notes. So Every time we actually write, we have to write a lot of things. So for example, if you're doing a stroke workup, this is the stroke workup. You put your symptoms here. What is your acute stroke intervention? This is not, not a TPA candidate. What is the etiology, et cetera. So you're gonna easily go and copy paste these SOAP notes for your particular EMRs and use them appropriately as you need to. Some of these attestations that we regularly use, you can copy paste them and make sure that you add them in your note templates as well. If you have a disclosure about teleconsults, if you have a disclosure about using digital voice assistant, and we we also have added different epic notes as well so you can basically go into them and then copy paste these notes it is going to continue to improve unfortunately this is something that i have personally have to do so i have to refine them as we keep going now there's also like an eeg report generator so if you have to write a technical summary these are the two options if you're writing a normal report you can use this or abnormal report you can use one of these canned responses in those responses as well so we are trying to create an all-in-one platform where you can actually use these resources for regularly while using the website for actual clinical work that's the point we are trying to create a clinical resource that is practical 
neurology calculators that people use all the time, for example, NIH stroke scale, ABCD2. Again, I'm very grateful to MD Calc, and then we have been using there. So it opens up into a new page, but you have all of them in one place so you can easily find which one you're looking for, and you can go ahead and do that. Lastly, we will eventually have Nora, which is actually Neurology Open Access Review Articles. So we'll actually have more and more review articles in one place that are open access. So again, this resource is made to be available for resource limited countries. And therefore, it is important that there are other resources that we also point to, which are open access in nature. And therefore, we are creating a whole list of articles that are available as an open access format for people to learn from. Lastly, we're going to also include all the guidelines. So currently, we are also in the making of the process. So if you go to movement disorder, you'll have Parkinson's disease guideline update on treatment of Parkinson's disease and evidence-based approach, stroke 2021 guidelines. And if you want to go to the web page or the PDF, you can directly go there without any you know, jumping through multiple hoops. You have one place where you can actually come and get all the resources that, in terms of neurology is concerned. So that's a very brief, uh, you know, neurology resources are trying to pack it in one place. The other thing I really wanted to help is a passion process for me is helping young physicians to get into neurology residency. And I just am very passionate about neurology, so I make sure that you know there are different resources that are available for people who want to go, and there's a match guide in there. So if you want to go into residency interviews, what, are the, what does it mean by that? What are the mock interview questions that you need to do, et cetera? Again, these are all constantly updated. We're working on it. We're going to work some videos out of it as well. If you want to apply for ERAS, application you know that there's one that I did a video so how you're gonna do what are the tips etc for looking into it as application as well and then we're gonna work on some guides so clearly this whole website is built on notion and then how do you actually you know use notion in the first place so this is a complete guide of you working in notion and this is extremely important for you to understand again it's free for personal use and when I share it and I'll show you in a minute how to work with notion also again as always, it is important that we create social proof. So social proof comes through either social sharing or you know showing your work. So you have to join the community and you have to make sure that you continue to show your work. Also, we have social media shares in place. So you can easily go in there and then there are different posts around Neurology Pocketbook. You can easily copy paste this particular. And if you want to share that in your tweet or your Facebook page, etc., it's just easier for you to actually go there and not only show your work, but also show the work of the whole community. The last section is about page in which we're going to talk about authors. So authors is that extremely important to me. So I wanted to make sure that there is a resource that people can come and have their own personal web page. So these are people who have contributed. So if, for example, this is my web page and you can easily go that what is my tagline, how, you know, just a little bit of information, my social media platforms in one place, what is basically my whole CV. And as a matter of fact, my actual CV is embedded, which I on, on Google Docs. So you will actually have access to your own personal web page to create your own web page and control your own online narrative believe it or not uh, your own line repetition is becoming extremely important so you make sure that you have one presence where you control the ground truth about yourself because it becomes a big issue moving forward so it's extremely important believe it or not and learn later in life both things show your work to create social proof and control your online narrative yourself at least have one page that has your ground truth over there this is an about us page that gives you a little bit of information about the team as well and then we're going to go into onboarding so this is one of those onboarding videos that i'm recording so this will be published in that website so you can actually easily access it over here and then lastly you have to join the discord community this is the main way we actually communicate again community is extremely important part of the whole project because people learn from each other and people teach each other so the whole point of it is not just to create one resource but to create a community that is proficient in digital tools and become physicians for the next century so that's where all the information is also communicated, resources, etc. Contribution application. So if you are wanting to contribute, this is where the application is. You have to go fill it out. We only consider you once you actually have filled out the contribution. And then this as as why contribute page, etc. So you can actually view that as well when you're actually thinking of contributing to the website. It's a searchable website, clearly. Now on the footer side, there's privacy policy, terms and conditions, disclaimer, and contact us. So if you really have any questions about anything, you can either contact us and if you are a part of the community in the discord of course you can post a question over there so this is sort of a brief overview of the website itself I wanted to make sure that everyone understands how this functions and works if you save a life it is as if you save the life of mankind please make sure you like 
comment, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my newsletter. If you want to get in touch with me, the best way is to go through Twitter or via LinkedIn. Also, make sure you follow the Academy website for regular updates. Thank you so much.